indulgences. But there's also another agenda, Alex, and that is open borders. Both of these are being sold as saving the planet, doing this for the children, helping families, but they're both feeding a globalist agenda. And an example of that, Alex, is the fact that he's going to be holding the mass here in Washington. It's going to be held in Spanish. Furthermore, it is the first and only canonization mass they've had in America. He's going to canonize, in other words, make a saint, a Father Sarah, who was one of the earliest missionaries into California back in 1749. And many people who are commenting on this say this is clearly sending a message that we have a dual heritage here in America. It's not just the English settling in Jamestown 120 years earlier. No, the important thing is the Spanish colonization of California. And what makes this interesting, Alex, is that in this particular case, Father Sarah, there's been a lot of controversy about him. And, and there's a lot of pushback from people criticizing the Pope for canonizing uh, Father Sarah because of the harsh treatment of the uh, Native Americans, of the Indians that were there at the time. Let's just be honest. Just, they used them for slave labor. Yeah, yeah. And just this But year, it's okay because the, the Catholic Church did it, so now it's fine. And, and, and they're right. now announcing that L.A. is the capital of Latin America. This is all part of a globalist takeover. Exactly. Just this year, the California legislature tried to remove a statue of Father Sarah from the uh, California legislative building. And so that's how unpopular, how controversial he is. But the Pope is doubling down. He wants to have someone who portrays this whole Aslan narrative of the fact that the uh, southwest of America really belongs to Mexico. I believe that's what's behind this. Uh, many people do. But of course, so there's an open borders, globalist agenda. There is a climate change, carbon tax credit, a kind of indulgence that we would pay to the global uh, elite billionaires. That's also going to be pushed in this visit. Well, it's truly sickening to see the full court press of the U.N., Obama, the Pope, global government, global taxes. Uh, the Democrats are introducing legislation. Well, they introduced it this morning uh, to, to try to shut down everything and track us and, and use smart meters to tax everything we do. But, of course, they're going to be exempt from it. This is a total takeover, and the Pope is making his move. And I'll say this. Whether the Catholic Church was good or bad before, it has been taken over by U.N., uh, Central yeah. Intelligence Agency slash EU bureaucrats using a pedophile scandal. Even the Guardian admits that. It is now state-run religion. The Vatican has fallen to the New World Order uh, any way you slice it and is now a total engine of evil. They have actually no interest whatsoever in the massive changes that are going on here in America. You would think that he'd be talking about that, but he's got an, an agenda of climate change. We knew this was coming. He put out the encyclical this summer. Uh, it didn't get, surprisingly, that much coverage for most people. Polls right after he did it said only about a third of Americans were even aware of it. Only 40 percent of Catholics of those percentage. I don't know how many agreed with him and how many disagreed with him, but they were not even aware of it. So he's coming here with all the pomp and the circumstance to draw attention to that agenda. And he's calling uh, for a revolution in America. Yes. He's coming yes. here and he has his his viceroys, his 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 cardinals in the U.S. calling for open borders. How about he calls for the Vatican to lower its walls and, and give its money to Latin America? I mean, it's just such a joke. It's so hypocritical. I wonder what his carbon footprint is on his plane, on his Pope mobile. Does he have air conditioning? Another one of those. It is the typical kind of hypocrisy that we see. And one of the things that he said was, why is it not news when a homeless elderly person dies on the street, but the stock market drops 2%? Well, we know that's the case. But let me tell you this. We're going to have a lot of homeless people, a lot of made homeless by the increased taxes. We're going to have a lot of elderly people who are going to be dying because they don't have heat, because they don't have air conditioning. We've already seen that happening in places in Germany where they've, they've made it's such a huge part of the uh, budget for retirees that they can't afford to heat their homes. Sure. So they're dying in the cold. That's what's going to happen. A it's billion not people will die over a decade if they pass the Copenhagen Treaty which yeah, is their yeah. treaty they're trying to ram through part two in December in Paris. So the, the 2015 is their big move. I mean, they are going from 50 miles an hour to 5,000 miles an hour, David. And can you imagine next year it's going to be 20,000 miles an hour? I mean, they are accelerating at attack speed. Why do you think that is? Well, you know, they had the Copenhagen uh, schedule. They didn't get what they wanted out of that a couple of years ago. So they're, they're putting everything on 2015 in the fall. 
from September through December is the major push. We knew that when he announced the encyclical. We said, wow, he's made this an encyclical. He's taken a scientist and put him in the Vatican Scientific Advisory Board, someone who has promoted uh, globalist uh, agendas of global government. He wants a, uh, uh, a globalist uh, legislature, a globalist constitution, every aspect of global government. And he also wants a reduction in the population. Sure. This is a guy he's brought onto a scientific advisory board. So he's here as a part of this major push that begins now and is going to go through December. They're hoping they're going to get some major legislation. Or in the case of America, now we're run by a dictatorship who can just do things by executive order. So I'm sure that Obama can just do whatever he wants. He's got the moral authority, he thinks, when the Pope joins him on this issue. It's, 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 it's a foreign religious leader with our president lecturing us. This is outrageous. This is a slap in everyone's face. This is disgusting. And, 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 and Catholics are really upset, and I, and I, and I know why they are. Uh, if you can, let's pan and show folks the so-called White House, uh, fully captured White House. Uh, by globalist interest right now. That's Shikari Jackson doing a great job on camera, and we'll hear more from Shikari Jackson tonight and David Knight on the Nightly News. We're going to break here, David, in 40 seconds. Tell me what's coming up, what you're going to be working on. Uh, his lordship, his, his, his grandness, his excellency, his supremeness is, is, is about to land. You're about to go cover that? Yeah, we're going to try to get out there to the base. I don't know how close we're going to be able to get to Andrews Air Force Base. CNN was reporting earlier, even though they have a reporter on the plane with the Pope, the CNN reporter said they'd embargoed their equipment. They were, were, try, they were doing a Skype report on CNN because they'd taken all their other satellite equipment from them. That's how paranoid security is here in this area. It is absolutely amazing. Of course, at the moment right now, it's just a bit of a... Hold uh, on, skip the break, here. skip the break. We're going to skip the break. I'm just going to continue with David Knox, because then I want to go to calls. Absolutely, you're 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 uh, panning around right there. I, I got to stop skipping these breaks, but this is a network break, not a station break, so stations shouldn't be playing over this. Um, I don't know, any other hosts don't do this because they all just well, not all of them. A lot of them are just greedy and want money. I could care less about money. It's just something to fund the operation to expose the new world order. So I want to thank you all for your support. It's why your support's more important than ever because I don't worry about raising money so much, and it is important to do. Uh, David, everything with the globalist is about breaking our will, throwing it in our face, conditioning us to submit. What do you make of Shalon, who criticizes us almost on a daily basis, sometimes daily, usually weekly, making up whole cloth lies, misrepresentations, media matters, all of them. What do you make of them coming out and, 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 and having an article, I'm a pedophile, but I'm not a monster, and it's the beginning of just accept me, it's no big deal. We knew this was coming now that they've sexualized our children in the schools, and so now uh, it begins, David Knight. I mean, there seems to be no end to this. As we said last night when we covered that, uh, I, w I was covering it with Leanne McAdoo as part of the Nightly News. He's talking about sexual orientation. And he begins the article by saying, I was born missing one of my hands. But that was nothing compared to what nature dealt me in terms of my sexual preferences. Now, he talks about how he's celibate. That's the way they're gradually going to roll it out. A pity for this guy. This is something that's just his sexual orientation. And then it'll be, be parents will be on the rights. news proud of them giving yeah. their five-year-old to, to pedophiles. It'll be, my yeah. son Billy has an orientation. He likes 50-year-old men. And then they'll just yeah. they'll go, oh. And then they'll have him on ESPN and go, oh, that's so good. Sorry, go ahead. I, I'd be very surprised to see this pope talking at all about the disintegration of the traditional family here in America, which is basically, that, that's been the core of their concerns uh, through my entire lifetime. Certainly, that's been the key thing they've talked about, talking about keeping the family together, stopping divorce, traditional marriage between a man and a woman, and preventing abortion. Has he said anything about those things? I haven't seen no, anything. No, the first thing he it. said when he got in a few years ago, agenda. first thing he said was, is Catholics need to stop obsessing on abortion. Yes, yes. Exactly. And of course, there's going to be some uh, people here. There, there's a back and forth as to whether or not Obama is going to embarrass the Pope by having some gay activists and some transgender people in here. I don't think there's anything about it. He hasn't seemed to be concerned whatsoever about that. So it's all about the globalist agenda, Alex, whether they're talking about climate change, whether they're talking about open borders, whether they're talking about greed and the marketplace. And we need to understand that when he talks about this, He's not talking about real free markets. He's talking about crony capitalism. He's talking about the kind of economic fascism that they had in Argentina. That was set up by the Peronistas. Many people are saying, is he a Marxist? Is he a fascist? Is he a Peronista? It doesn't really He's matter. He's a triple agent. All... He, yeah, sold exactly. out, he sold out capitalist and communist. He's an inside triple globalist agent. 
They're all demagogues. They're all dictators. He's probably the head of Spectre. I mean, if I had to yeah. say anybody in the world who may be the head of the New World Order, it's Pope Francis. It's not the Queen of England. It's not David Rockefeller anymore. I believe he may be the head of the Illuminati. I believe Pope well, Francis, everything in his life, I've studied him now, everything he's done, he may be the star chamber leader running every major group. If you go back and you look at his history, you look at the uh, history of liberation theology, the Jesuits, all these different things, everything is breaking tradition. It's all about breaking tradition within the Catholic Church. And that's what we're seeing now. Yeah, they didn't come agenda. to defend Jesus or the Catholic Church. They've no. overthrown it. No, no, exactly. Have you heard him say anything about Jesus? I'm not really sure we're going to hear anything about that, Alex. We're going to hear about these other things. As I mentioned before, he's going to canonize, make a saint out of a very controversial missionary, uh, famous for abusing uh, the Indians that were there at the time. And, of course, he's even breaking with tradition and saying, you know what, we don't need to have two miracles reported. We got one miracle, kind of, so we're going to go with that. We're not going to wait for the second one. We're just going to do Why it. Why doesn't he make a famous pedophile, uh, you know, canonize a famous pedophile while he's at it? Give him time. <laughs> well, David okay. Knight, I appreciate you and Jakari. I, I would do a man on the street and ask folks what they think about major Democratic publications, uh, basically soft-peddling uh, pedophilia. Uh, what do they think the Pope's going to talk about? Are they concerned that he wants to put carbon taxes on us that nobody else has to pay? Uh, what you know? What do they think his agenda is? Is it good to have a foreign leader here of a religious yes. group lecturing us and telling us what to do? I mean, it's just unprecedented. Thank you so much, David Knight. Thank you, Alex. He'll be joining us tomorrow on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So will Jakari Jackson. Jakari's going to be doing Man on the Street and more. Uh, so pray for those guys while they're up there in D.C. But so much of it, David, is reporting on the security. I mean, it's like the alien leader has landed, and it's the greatest security ever to to, to make sure nothing happens to him because he's such a good, sweet pope because the liberal media said he was good because they sent in pedophile squads to take over the Catholic Church, and they've taken it over. Whether it was good or bad before, it's bad now. And, man, get ready because they're coming for our kids. If they can't kill them in the womb, they're going to hand them over to pot belly pedophile. Uh, Augusta in Alabama. Thanks for holding. You're a trooper. You're on the air. Augusta has been a real trooper, so we're going to let them sit there and wait till they hear that they're actually on the line to go to us. They're probably listening on a delay. Augusta, do you hear us? Yeah, we're going to put we're going to put them on hold till they come back. Mama, Mama in Oregon. Oh, I say the word mama. Some people don't have a mama at home. That's hateful. So let's just call her. Zaga. Actually, that's what they're teaching in public schools now. They just make up an acronym and you don't, because it might be hurtful. So, Mama, you can't use that word. A cult of control freaks calling themselves liberal told me so, and I, I do what they say. Uh, but uh, go ahead, Mama, you're on the air. Hello, Alex. I had to call in today. Um, I saw, you know, actually felt your energy, and I saw you get, you know, just upset about what's going on, and I'm the same way. I get upset, but also I wanted to call on, on the topic of pedophilia because now I, don't you be don't you be sexist or racist here. They have a right to your children. I mean, the liberal media oh, says no, so. They don't. Those pedophilias are monsters. Hater, hater, okay? hater, racist, racist, I racist, hater, 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 hater. Sorry, pedophilia, and it almost ruined my life. Okay, it almost ruined me, almost ruined my life. I was able to come back. All right, well, I shouldn't have been sarcastic with you. It's the most abominable thing there is. I appreciate you having the courage to talk about it. I didn't know you were a victim of these demons who committed another thought crime, these trendies. Uh, tell us what happened to you. My uh, mother married a, pedoph a pedophile, and uh, he molested me and my uh, cousin. And other members of my family. Um, and he is still walking around in the town I live in. Um, you know, but I, I don't live with the hate for that person. I, I live with the, with the, I live with a huge, uh, survivor type energy. Okay. I was able to come back from severe depression, anxiety. Uh, you were able to transcend this guy, but well, that's good. 
you know, I see him walking around knowing that he's probably preying on other people, you know. I hope he doesn't fall down the stairs. Him. Well, yeah, <laughs> but, you know, these pedophiles make prayers.